I went into a dark place today, and I emerged victorious. Ow! All right, so moment of truth. We. Once we got to this yard, it took me about a month and a half to get this donor bus out of where it was. And during this time, I took the valve cover off of the motor and I dumped about a gallon of mystery oil, maybe a little bit more. And then I pulled the injectors out and put another gallon of mystery oil down onto the top of the piston. That way, if the motor had any rust in it, I'd be able to work it through. At this point, I hadn't turned the motor over to even know if it was a good motor or not. We just trusted Carl and he knows his buses pretty well. So we trusted the fact that he said it was a good running bus. I've got my crossover tubes out and the first injector is fixing to come out. There we go. Just like that. Tonight we are celebrating. We had some leftover wine from our wedding. We've been waiting to pop for a special occasion. And it is that. We got our bus right here today. After we moved our bus to the spot where we started harvesting it for parts, I first began to take everything out of the inside. So I stripped back the whole wiring harness inside and outside. I got turn signals, steering wheel, speedometers, instrumental. We got a lot of stuff just out of the inside the first few days it was sitting there. After I had gotten all of this interior stuff out, then I started working on the motor, the transmission, getting everything detached from the donor bus. Once I got the motor detached, luckily we had some forklifts that worked and got it out with a forklift. So the reason we chose this donor bus and put all this effort into this bus is because it was the perfect bus for us. It had the same motor, it was built the same year. It was actually eight days apart from each other coming out of the factories. So all the parts were the same. The difference really was a Thomas versus a Freightliner. Like the owner likes to say, it's a um, same mom, <sighs> different dads. It's like a stepbrother. Right. Today is day two of really starting to mess with the bus. Yesterday I drained the fluids and got the radiator and intercooler off. Today I'm gonna drop the drive shaft. Stay tuned. Good afternoon world of YouTube today. I'm hoping to get the transmission out. The goal is to get the old transmission off. See how that goes. First, before I start undoing bolts under the bus, I'm going to take my plate off my access plate. And uh, I buttoned this all up real nicely and now I got to take it all back out. This is a magnet. It was a tip from a buddy of mine, Mr. David, over at Free Range Nomad. It's to help with the chunks of metal that may or may not end up right there. It helps keep them in place and not get circulated back through the motor. All right. Now we're going to see if I can break these bolts with a, with a 3 8 drive. I'm going to put you on time lapse. I did not want the downpipe controlling my life. I just went ahead, I got it down. As you can see, the water started coming out. That's, that's in fact from the stacks. I definitely need to cut a hole here and let that drain out for the rain water.
Now what? Now I need help. Okay. I went into a dark place today. And I emerged victorious. Well, not quite yet. We gotta get Bubba first. This is a heavy fucking transmission, man. And now it's, uh, now it's cockeyed. I don't know if you can see it, but it's starting to slide off the transmission jack. Uh, luckily I wrapped a chain around it, and the chain is what's pretty much holding the weight right now. Um, so she's going to get someone to help me get this straight on the jack again. When she died, he's coming. Yeah, the chain, the chain's holding most of the weight. Okay. Mama, look what I did! Oh. <laughs> 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 Come on. Go for it. Is that all the way down? Okay. Yeah. 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 He's got those wires. Fuck that wire. Ow! Stop it, <laughs> I'm gonna let it go, Bubba. Yeah. Baby. Good morning, folks. We dropped the drive shaft this morning. We figure might as well get all these these U bolts changed. Uh, so here we are. We've got six U bolts to change and two hanger bearings. So I just dropped it all like it was, and uh, we're going to pay somebody else to do it because we got a lot of work to do. These are our carrier bearings. We are getting two of these replaced, and this is where our U-joints go in. We have two carrier bearings and five U-joints. So this is our fourth place we've come to to get our drive shaft done. All we're looking to do to our drive shaft is the bare minimum. The hanger bearings and the U-joints replaced. And the first place broke our hearts at a $1,400 quote, just for the bare minimum. We've rode around, all around Houston, and ended up here, C&T's drive shaft. And uh, it's, it's gonna be a little longer of a wait, but it's, it's the cheapest quote that we have found here in Houston, just for the bare minimum on our drive shaft. 580 was their quote versus $1,400. And uh, our second quote was $800, so. This seems to be our best option. <laughs> so, we got back from the drive shaft company and uh, tried to get the rear end bolted on first. We're going backwards, three, two, one, opposite of the way we took it off. And the back one wouldn't fit into the, to the yoke on the rear end. So then we got flustered, we got out from underneath the bus. We checked all the drive shafts while they were on the ground tried to fit them together and they did not even fit into themselves. So we called the drive shaft company and I kind of chuckled it off and said that there's, you know, no way it shouldn't fit, that they're the same ones. So I asked them if there was any trick to this, if, the, if there was just something I was doing wrong. And he says that sometimes the caps, when, when they fill them with grease, doesn't press down all the way. You just need to hit them with a hammer, or clamp them down with a C-clamp. So that's what I did. I fought around trying to find a C-clamp, couldn't find one. So then I started tapping them with the hammer and they definitely lock into place. You can tell just as they sit that there's a gap on the bottom of them that they're not sitting properly, which is real inconvenient because we paid $580 for a shop to do this. So I would, I would have thought that they'd have pressed it down and verified that they, they were good to go because um, just like it sits, the cap just comes right off and on so they wrap duct tape around it to keep it on um so i guess i've never installed a drive shaft nor have i ever got one worked on so i'm not sure if that is the responsibility of the customer but um i feel that it's not i feel that it's not um and that that sucks when it snaps into place there's quite a bit 
to go to get it snapped into place. And then it still runs, but it doesn't come off, so. He knew he didn't do it right because he, he put duct tape. He knew he didn't finish it. Like, say, I'm just gonna duct tape it. They're on. Moving on to back underneath the bus, Eli then removed the torque converter. Next, he removed the flywheel. I've got a ton of gravel in my shoe. on my shoulder. Heart full of blues. Flywheel is not as Good day. This has been stressing me out because this is not the same as the donor bus. Apparently, this is the part that connects to the crank and it is the output shaft for the motor. And um, Allison Automatics require a different type of one. And I have been unsure if I can take this off or not. If it is connected to the crank, I cannot take the crank out. I will not take the crank out because you have to I mean, it's a, very, it's a very significant job to swap out a crank, so it's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to swap out the whole motor if that's the case, but I'm fixing to find out now what the verdict is. This has been a lot more than I thought I was going to have to do. This plate right here bolts to the back of the motor, and I've got the motor mounts off. There's only three points of contact holding this motor up, and I've got two of them off. So right now I have a jack holding up the motor. So I'm fixing to yank this off and find out. And then uh, this is real sketchy. So I'm probably gonna put some wood, some more wood, just as a security measure to hold that motor up. It's definitely moving. I think I like where this is going. Nice. That is exciting. After Eli finally got this clutch adapter off, he changed the rear main seal. If you would like to see how this is done, check out our video. Common five nine common leaks. We're over here at Chalks in Houston. We got the flywheel machine down. Back smooth. We got a reman clutch. Got a new pilot bearing. Uh, some new gaskets so we are good to go start this transmission swap yay this only costed me 480 okay guys hopefully you can hear me this is the part that's been stressing me out for a little while now because the motor has been up on jacks so getting this big guy back up is the real test of time. Whew, coming in. So right here, I am swapping out our clutch housings. The Allisons come with an SAE 3 bell housing and the Eaton I am putting on is an SAE 2. So I had to swap this whole thing out. Uh, I talk about this more in another video, so go check it out. Down in the Gonna be the flywheel. Let me tell you, this is much heavier 
than the automatic flywheel. My gosh, this is a heavy flywheel. Can you look up another torque spec for me? It says 105 on the flywheel bolts and 30 on the pressure plate bolts. Make sure to do the star batteries. It's heavy. Oh. Push the uh, I the got the no, I can do it. I can okay. I'm sure it's where it needs to be. Okay, so we've got this clutch mounted up. Luckily, I had my wonderful wife uh, to help me start these bolts while I held it up. This is not anything that's light. So, I've got it all bolted up. I don't have it torqued down to spec, nor do I know at this very moment what that torque spec is. But I did buy this guide today. It's the 10 spline. It goes right down in there into the pilot bearing is where the tip of this rides so we've got that pretty solid so once i get these down to spec we'll be ready for transmission all right friends this is the second time i've gotten this cover off and i guess this time i will record it the first time i kind of just moved all the gears around made sure all the teeth looked good we're basically making sure that the grooves down here and the tip of the teeth here, there's no hot marks, wear marks, chip marks, that kind of thing. So if you move these all around, you can see, you know, all the teeth. And that's what I did to inspect it to make sure that it was a decent transmission. And that's really all you can do unless you're a, a transmission tech. <laughs> All we had access to at the time was this transmission jack, which wasn't a, a low profile transmission jack, it was quite tall. So we couldn't get the transmission under the bus on the jack. We didn't want to spend an extra 150 bucks uh, that wasn't worth having a good day to us. So we decided to drag the transmission under the bus and pick it up onto the jack. And close to the top. You can see here we're starting to stab the transmission it definitely took quite a few times to get it on there accurately and and slid on where it needed to go the difference between my bus and the donor bus ended up being just a half inch lift in the floor that wasn't there on the donor bus so this transmission actually didn't fit without bending this lip out of the way and then we finally were able to get it stabbed into place. Looks 
looks pretty good though. That's money, dude. All right, so moment of truth. We've got most of the boats torqued down to spec. We're missing a two for this. Uh, this is where the downpipe comes for the exhaust. So that's the only two that we have left to really tighten. I'm gonna let this jack down and get it out of here. Let's see if this transmission falls. No, everything looks good. Good morning, guys. It is a whole new season, as you can tell. We got a little fire going and we're in a new location. Last time I was filming, we were up over here. Since all they do is pressure wash here, then we had to move because water travels this way. You can see that pump down there, maybe. And this is the lowest point, so they like to pressure wash on this corner. So we had to move. So this is gonna be my first day working since we've moved. I added my antifreeze back this morning. I had one drip. I fixed the one drip so far. I'm just, you know, you watch for uh, you watch for leaks and tighten up your hoses as you go. Some of them may not be tight enough. I haven't worked on the bus in about two weeks now. I'm in the process of putting everything back together. I really wanted the bus to be running by now, and it was been very frustrating. It's been it's been stressful. We've been spending a lot of money. I've spent most of my money here on this uh, swap, and so our plans for the future are really uncertain because of how long this is going to take and money a lot of stressors sometimes you gotta walk away sometimes you gotta take a break because this stuff is stressful this stuff is turning bolts and turning wrenches and all this motor work when you're uncertain of, of all of, all of it it's not good to work all day all night on hopefully after a long break i can get a good bit done today we got the new drive shaft in and then we got it in place my original measurement said we were a half inch off and once everything was up there and buttoned up, it was an inch off, a little over an inch. So we got the drive shaft dropped off again at another drive shaft place to get the one inch added to it. And they also let us know that the carrier bearing was bad that we had just paid $80 for. So that's frustrating. So now we're $1,000 into a drive shaft that is bringing this conversion probably somewhere around $3,500, maybe close to 4000 we're in on this job so far which is stressful but it is what it is it's a new season i'm a fan of the cold i like the barrel fire hopefully we can get some stuff done today cross your fingers for me guys so after we got the new drive shaft in and attached it was now time to attach the downpipe and fill the transmission up with fluid all right, so just got my downpipe connected right here. I didn't film this either, but I wrapped it with some exhaust strap because it's so close to the transmission. It's actually touching the transmission on one spot. So I put this heat shield back on and I wrapped it with exhaust strap. Hopefully that won't cause any trouble down the line, but it's all back on there. I haven't put my shift knob because we're gonna fill it up with fluid. And uh, for a while I was curious about how we were gonna fill this thing up, but then I realized that this goes straight to the bottom. So we're fixing to do that. We're gonna get a funnel. It's supposed to take 1.7 gallons of fluid, but they only sold SAE 50 full synthetic at truck stores in five gallons. So that's what we got. Okay, I've been working on this clutch pedal, or this not clutch pedal, the factory one, for a little while now, probably about an hour, and I think it's finally coming out. First matchup, make sure everything fits. All looks A-OK -okay to me.
So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go out and crack my injector line, um, the part at the valve cover. Um, I'm gonna do one, there's different techniques. Some people say one, three, and six. I'm just gonna do the first three, maybe first four. And uh, I'm just gonna crack it and Amber's gonna bump the starter. What I mean by bump the starter is once this glow plug light goes away, she's just gonna tap it for a second. Just, and what that does is engage the fuel pump. So that's gonna shove fuel through the system thinking that we're, we're trying to start it, but we're not gonna try to start it because we know it's not gonna start till the air is out of the system. So she's gonna do this for every line that I get cracked. And then it should start pretty easy. Okay, so that worked a lot better than we thought it was gonna. Amber bumped the starter about four times and then held it down for, you know, about four seconds and that was it. All the air was out and it was chugging the life, um, which isn't normal for these 24 valves. It's normally pretty difficult to get these started. So I think the air is out of the system. We're going to go ahead and try to start it up now. Right, guys so update on the bus situation we've been running the bus every day for about four days now as soon as the bus warms up we get a check engine light and it um, takes the power away from the motor so it's called derailing the motor I believe anyway we have this nice fancy computer I was able to use it for about 15 minutes before it required a 10 hour update and one of the codes it gave me was a VP44 injection pump um, communication issue. A little bit of research tells me it's the death code for the VP44. Hoping that's not the case. Hoping maybe I primed the system wrong or there's air in the system or something. But we'll know in uh, about eight more hours. It definitely did turn out to be the VP44 that failed. But... Don't be alarmed, you really don't have to take the VP44 off to do a transmission swap. The only reason I took mine off was to fix oil leaks. I had three main oil leaks, the rear main seal, the tappet cover, and the front crank. And the tappet cover leak required getting the VP44 off. So that is the only reason it failed. It actually ended up being locked up when we got it off. Along with the VP44 failure are two other mistakes. We left the downpipe touching the side of the transmission which is where the, the clutch levers rode and so I just had to take the downpipe back down and ding a dent in it. Other than that the clutch cable we just had to lube it up it was very very tight so after getting that lubed up everything went very smoothly and since then we've put about 300 miles on our transmission and everything has been just fine. So thanks for watching y'all. Please like this video if you found it helpful and we'll see you in the next one.